Welcome back everyone, I'm Sethoroth, and today we are diving into a heavily modded Skyrim build. Now this particular mod will be fairly easy for even the less experienced modders to put together because it only requires about four or five and they're actually by the same uh, mod developer so they fit together really well but we're going to be putting together a mod which I, a build which I have contently deemed the God of the Dead build. So without further ado we're going to dive into the first step of this build which as with most builds starts in your perk tree. We are using the Ordinator perk tree, which is actually vital to the God of the Dead because it enables you to assemble skeletons, which you keep for days, not minutes. Not only can you assemble these skeletons, but the number that you can hold has no limit. So no longer are you trapped in the vanilla playthrough with only one or two undead to your name as you call yourself a necromancer. Now, the maximum number of skeletons you have increases by one for every 50 points of magicka. So my cap is at seven skeletons right now. Instead, and rather than having just regular skeletons, I also have skeletal mages with a full range of abilities. From fire, to frost, to shock, to poison, to drain, and even to stagger your opponents. For your deity, I highly recommend diving into the Winter Sun Religions mod. You want to start off with the Fowler of Hermaeus Mora. Under this deity, you collect Eldritch Pages, and once you've collected eight of them, you combine them into tomes that improve your magics and your shouts. Now you can see I have a small list put together, and I'm still trying to put them all. They are a fairly slow drop. They are very creepy when you read one that's new, because it has a little conversation that pops into your mind and messes with your head. It's pretty cool. But once you get uh, eight of these together, you bind them into a tome and then read it like you would any other spellbook, and it gives you a permanent buff. Now the key here is that it's permanent, meaning you can switch deities and keep the buff. Now what deity do you grab afterwards? Of course, it is Manny Marco. Manny Marco Deity will actually further enhance both the damage of your undead and give your illustrious undead natural health regeneration so your army just continues to power up and to heal and to do more damage as you dive into battle. But for now we're going to stick to Hermaeus Mora because frankly I want all those passive buffs. I'm kind of a completionist like that. I want my money's worth, you know? I want all my passive buffs. I want to gather my full army at my disposal. And yeah, it's gonna be good. If you know any true sons and daughters of Skyrim, <laughs> um, dude, I, I reassemble the sons and daughters of Skyrim. You're looking at them behind me. <laughs> That's so great. I have seven of them now. I made one of each actually. I have a frost, a skeletal mage, a fire, poison, stagger. I know I'm missing one, shock, and then your standard melee grunt. First and usually the first one to go down. <laughs> first one made, usually the first to go down. It's been fun so far. For your standing stone, you're definitely going to want to go for the ritual stone. If you want to really feel like a god of the dead, the ritual stone under the Andromeda mod is fantastic because this stone actually listens. It records the dead around you and then in your next time you jump into combat it summons them as your minions to help so when you go into a vampire lair and you find a big pile of bodies yeah you get to use them all in the next fight it's awesome it also adds a secondary buff where any reanimation spells last 20 percent longer and work on targets up to 10 levels higher so if you want to feel like a god of the dead going in with both undead and ghosts this is it faithless imperials Okay, dude, you're messing up my, my show here. This this is getting out of hand. I'm going to need you to back off. Thank you. All right. Also, before I forget, as a kind of a nice little touch, in the Ordinator mod, there is also a perk for bringing in three undead skeevers under your control. Not particularly powerful, but I just love the idea that you just swarm the bad guys with minions whenever battle kicks off. 
which is fantastic. Next, we're going to dive into the guts and glory of the spells. These spells are from the Apocalypse mod list, which also come from the same mod builder as the rest of these spells. We have Akuto's Recital, which saves up to three spells so that they auto-cast when you go into combat. So for example, when I go into combat, my Iron Flesh immediately kicks on at full power for the maximum duration and I don't have to end up casting it every time I go into a fight, which is fantastic. We're also going to be using that same effect on Soul Cloak, so whenever I'm near hostile units and they die, assuming I have a gem that'll fit it, I automatically suck their souls in, which again, totally feels like a God of the Dead thing. It is fantastic. Another apocalypse spell I highly recommend is called Spell Twine. This spell adds a secondary effect to up to three spells in your arsenal. So, so for example, whenever I cast Carrion Wind in combat, it will automatically heal me by half my uh, alteration level. And since that's maxed out, that's 50. So every time I use my Carrion Wind spell, it will heal me by half my alteration level. So in that way, I'm always getting healing. And then I even, I even tied it into my Iron Flesh and my Soul Cloak spells so that they boost my armor and my magic resist whenever combat ticks off, which is so much fun. Lastly, of course, we have an assortment of conjurations. Never hurts to be able to also conjure your armored mage or archer. I don't quite recommend it because another perk ability that I've added in, it comes from the restoration perk tree. This is kind of cool because with only with one perk, that one right there, Necromanticon, you unlock four disease-based spells as you level up, which are fantastic. They do disease-based damage, which, would you know, these guys are immune to. So you get area of effect disease spells that these things can just shrug off and almost nothing else in the game can resist or be immune to, which is fantastic because me and friendly fire we don't we don't work out too well <laughs> uh, I tried running this with the destruction mage like lightning bolts and stuff and I just kept frying these guys one of the things the mod builder did to make these things more balanced is they are very vulnerable to your spells so if you accidentally throw a lightning bolt and one of these guys steps into the way yeah they, they disintegrate real fast they can take hits from everything else but your magic just unravels them so yeah having something that they're all immune to is also fantastic. Plus, let's face it, if you're a god of the dead and you're spreading disease, that just fits. Now, we may have left this till last, but it is certainly not the least. We have the alteration spell tree. Obviously, if you want to tighten up your defenses and throw on some light or heavy armor, more power to you. But since we've already got a crap ton of allies to back us up, going with mage armor seemed like the best way. If you're using Ordinator, it will actually buff you through your flesh spells, so they are 200% stronger if you are not wearing armor. So that will take the 80 points from my Iron Flesh spell and turn it into 240. I also have Distorted Shape, which means for the first 10 seconds of combat, or until I take an action, I am immune from damage, which is very helpful when you're waiting for your guys to get into position. We also have energy shield, so a percentage of the damage I take is actually absorbed by my magicka instead of my health. So it gives you a little extra layer of defense. I also threw on, for the heck of it, alter self resistances, which boosts both my fire and I believe shock resistances were the two that I chose. So those are the core perk assignments. Obviously I also threw in some enchanting, but we're going to get into that next, because the last piece of the pie. The cherry on top is the enchanting mod list called Summer Mist. Now Summer Mist has some amazing mods, amazing enchantments I should say. So one of these, for example, you can tell, 9% chance to loot an additional magic item from people you kill, which is a nice touch, you know, you know line your pockets, get some more magical items. I also, you can tell, I, I learned how to use the command line on this game to adjust your character level, your magicka, your spells, 
and I actually gave myself the emperor's robes in a circlet because it just seemed to fit, right? What's cl the, the next step down from a god is an emperor. So as you can see, my emperor's robes, I guess the font's a little small, so I racked three different mods on this thing, courtesy of the enchantment perk tree and ordinator. Any friendly conjured creatures within 58 feet gain 25% attack damage and 100% health. Now that I think about it, I don't know if my skeleton, skeletons actually count as conjured, but if I were to conjure from the spell one of my skeletons, they would then have boost attack and damage. Magicka regeneration, and I absorb health based on my level from enemies within 28 feet. So you'll notice when I dive into combat, I literally just passively draw health from everything around me. You feel like a total god of the dead. Obviously, we have resistances to various elements, fire and frost. Friendly conjured creatures. So, yeah, I, so I stacked on an extra buff for friendly conjured creatures and resistance to shock. And then obviously some, some boosts to my restoration spells so they don't cost as much. Uh, don't pay too much attention to the travel cloak. That's from Campfire, but that is not necessary for this mod. It's just an extra way to add in a little bit of extra resistances. As my unluck would have it, I hijacked one of my vampire bods, uh, my vampire builds. So this guy is a little weak to fire and has to fight at night, but he's also got night vision. So hopefully that doesn't detract too much from the proceedings. Alright, the last spell I want to show you guys is called Power of the Master. So you can see I've got my Power of the Master in my right hand, Iron Flesh in my left. Here is the beauty of this spell. You know all these guys that are my allies? Abra? Kadabra. That's right, they all now have my Iron Flesh spell. My enhanced one that boosts their armor by 240 points. It's beautiful, it's amazing, and they're all super tanky now. I love it. My squishy skeletons are not nearly as squishy. And why do you think we're uh, ready to go? Packed up out in front of some uh, human victims? Because, as you know, necromancers, well, we need ingredients. Abracadabra. Woo! And in we go! Alright, carrying swarm. Quick moving. Hits a lot of them. Oh, yeah, I uh, my, my skeevers, unfortunately, do not have the same resistance to this spell. Alright, I think we got one more over here. Maybe not? No? Alright. Oh, whoop, we got someone over here. Where do you think you're going? Ah, oh, it works so fast. So the cool thing about the Z spells is they actually are based on attack over time, damage over time, which I think is a great... Wait a second, are we clear? Okay. All right, it was important to get away from there before that. They, they had one commander that won't die, right? He just keeps coming back. And if he has a chance to reset the fight, then it'll automatically summon all of the soldiers that I just recorded for the ritual spell and I don't want to do that. I want to save them for something special. This is going to be fun. So as you can see, my disease spells do damage over time. So it's a lot like being a warlock if you've ever played World of Warcraft or... Oh geez, what was that? Oh wow. My uh, life absorption works uh, very well. <laughs> Apparently I just absorbed a bunny rabbit without even trying. Alright, please ignore this particular dragon remains. He was from a previous test of this plan. And uh, with a little bit of luck, there we go. Wow, I didn't even have to rest. Oh no, not this one. Please not this one. Oh no. Come back here. Come on. Where, where's the dragon? Where's the dragon? I'm using the Deadly Dragons mod to try and spice things up, because these guys just chew through vanilla dragons like it's going out of style. This particular dragon, I haven't been able to figure out. We've got a number of different dragon types. And this one doesn't seem to want to show up. There's whales on you. 
I don't know if it's a glitch in the matrix, glitch in the mod, or what. Can I just shoot up at that direction? No, I don't see him. Okay, well, I am going to find a dragon for you guys. So if this dragon doesn't show up soon, we'll reload and... Oh, wait. Okay. That was weird. Alright, so that was the Deadly Dragons mod, for your enjoyment. As you can see, this body is labeled as a Dracolich, which was a lot of fun to fight. And I don't really know what that was all about, because there wasn't technically a dragon assigned to that. But, let's see, it is 3 a.m., so I'm going to really hope that if we wait a couple more hours, we can trigger another assault without sunlight showing up and ruining my day. Aha! Alright, bring me another dragon. One that will actually land. Oh, there's my ghosts. Look at that. We got like six ghosts and a dragon. It's Christmas. It's my birthday. Let's play. Yeah, come on. Okay. All right, skeletal mages are resisting carry and wind, which is what they're supposed to do. This dragon, ooh, this guy's going to be tough. He is not dying like he's supposed to. Come on. Ooh, all right. This is going to be a real fight. Oh, almost forgot. Power of the master. Armor for everybody. Where's that dragon? Okay, we're gonna have to uh, get a little creative with this guy. This was technically a one-handed character, but what? Wow, nope, 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 nope. I don't know why I thought I could melee you. I also don't know why you're so tough. Whoa, whoa, why, what's with all the red dots? Okay, this one summons corpses. Lots and lots of corpses. This is new. I haven't fought a worm before. I really hope they don't. Okay, I don't think they're resistant to disease. That's helpful. Healing, healing, healing. Man, this... Okay, this is a fight. Please don't fall, my skeletons. Alright, alright. We got our health back, got our magicka back. We can wear this guy down. This is what disease magic is all about. Oh, wait, wait, okay, he's got friends. He's coming, there they are. All right, stay off of my skeletons. Leave my buddies alone. That's right. Even your undead are apparently not immune to leprosy. I'll stop you as much as I like when I get my magicka back. Oh, geez, ah! It's a good thing I'm highly resistant to frost right now. Ah, uh, but apparently not resistant enough. Where's my magicka when you need it? Uh, okay, what do we got here? I did not potion up for this fight. So we're just gonna go through the whole bit. All right, we got healing. We've got poison. Oh, are we good? I think we did it. Woo! So the nice thing about skeletons is they're not exactly, they're not essential. But they do take a knee, and then unless they take a lot of damage at that point, they will die. They, they'll, or they'll come back. So, for example, you give this guy about 30 seconds after this fight, and he's good to go. Now, this may seem... I don't know how you guys see that. If it seems, like, overpowered, if it seemed like they didn't quite pull their weight. But the number that you can put together is, well, basically limitless. However much magicka you have, you can always make more. The only disadvantages that I've seen so far is sometimes when there's this many of them, they don't coordinate well. <laughs> they'll, they'll wander around and get a little confused. Uh, in dungeons, that can happen, particularly when they get crammed up. You've got you know, your narrow hallways in a dungeon that you're trying to run through. That can always be a problem. But for the open, particularly when you're fighting dragon assaults, ah, it's great. All right. So that is our God of the Dead build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed meeting our little skeleton friends. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if there are any other interesting builds for Skyrim that you've heard of before. Or maybe even some cool characters from TV shows that you like, that you'd like to build. The Ritual Stone, for example, I think would be really interesting in an Aragorn build from Lord of the Rings. Because remember how he was able to bring ghosts back from the dead to help them in a fight? The Ritual Stone seems like a perfect addition to that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little presentation, 
And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care.